So why not? Let's start a little early. Hello, Shauna. Sweet tea for me tonight. Good. Oh, man. I've got everything. I need to make some sweet tea. I do miss. I do miss sweet tea. Hello, Marcy. Garden telepathy. Dana. Hello, Kukla. Thanks for joining this evening. Patriot Mom, Relentless One, Marcia, Mr. Templeton, always a pleasure. Beverly, Jerome, mm. Tug, are you going to save some of that for me? Uh, chicken enchilada, I had uh, shrimp and chicken Alfredo. Wings Girl, it's good to see you. Hello, Regina. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Joe. Mini Money. Mini Mac, you're there. White Wolf. Always, boy, I tell you guys, I, it's, if I can ever talk White Wolf into joining, you want to talk about one interesting individual with quite a lot of past and history uh, to share. I get tired of making sweet tea for my husband every other day. Holly, you know, if I'd have met a woman like you, I'd, I'd probably be contentedly married now making me sweet tea we need to straighten that man out for you he needs to appreciate what he got what he has logical spock it is good to see you just got done eating a bowl of soup hello cheryl up in the big canada canada land hello michelle hello cue ball lady die where have you been or if i just not been noticing as much as I should be. Scooter just came in from fishing my pond. A couple of six pound largemouth bass and eight bluegill. Wow, Scooter. Uh, warm weather must have them biting. Oh, Mike the Muppet. Guys, we have Skeffla back playing as uh, Mike the Muppet today. Let's just go ahead and remove that one. And it's going great, by the way. I love it here. The people are fantastic. Work is going well. It's very rewarding. I'm so glad you asked. Hello, N Pudre. Uh, I don't even know how to say that. Dragon Eye Products. Having a little Jim Beam. Little Jim Beam. I started a touch early. We do have one advertisement for the evening. I thought it was apropos to run with. Uh, well, you guys know what's coming. If you feel like you're tossing and turning at night, you're not alone. A recent survey reveals an estimated 164 million Americans struggle to get a good night's sleep. In a study of over 4,000 adults, 27% said they had trouble falling or staying asleep most nights. Poor sleep may be one of the most ignored and urgent issues of our time. So why thousands of Americans are turning to this amazing sleeping pill. It was formulated with seven key nutrients to support deep, refreshing, and restorative sleep, as well as a calm and peaceful state of mind during the day. With its seven premium research-backed nutrients, every serving is designed to help put your mind and body at ease while helping support the deep sleep it craves, including L-theanine, melatonin, magnesium, lemon balm extract, chamomile extract, passion flower extract, and vitamin B6. These seven key ingredients provide very powerful support for deep, refreshing, restorative sleep. Get your bottle 51% off and reclaim your good night's sleep. If you order today, you'll also receive several free bonuses before their half-off sale ends by going to sleepwithmark.com. That is sleepwithmark.com. Or simply clicking more at the bottom of this video in the description box and click the link in the description. <laughs> Y'all are so not okay. At Rami Jack, I, I can't, guys. Alcohol keeps me from sleeping. Um, just ruins it all together. I think it's, you know, the swinging dopamine levels, etc. I just, uh, the older I get, the less I consume. Still enjoy a nice whiskey on occasion. And I like a good cigar on occasion as well. I hope Mike is okay. He was kind of out of sorts about his near lottery win. If you guys don't know, I'll see if we can talk him into it. It's kind of a sore thing for him. I'm not convinced that Mike may not need a little therapy after his near win. Um, well, I shouldn't say near win, guys. He did indeed, in fact, win 
the lottery. Big one. Uh, I'll have to let him tell you all about it, though. He's probably going to cuss me big time. <laughs> no, in a well-spirited way. In a well-spirited way. Um, train wreck will make uh, making me wise. There is a lot of fear that it could. Um, I'm going to look once uh, Mike is on his thing. There is a suspected map. I share. I should have talked about it this evening. I shared an article that had it in it but I did not specifically share that um, suspected fallout map as far as the winds go with it in the air. Um, so I should probably dive onto that one. I'll look for that once I turn Mike loose. Reboot. I didn't do one yesterday evening, but I did post it on Twitter and True Social, and Kukla was so very kind and put it in our Telegram. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of news. I was getting a lot of emails, a ton of emails about how people weren't going to get to join. If there was anything big, please post it somewhere else because they were celebrating with their loved one, their Valentine's Day. Uh, so my son was like, eh, there's not a whole lot of news. You should probably cancel it so these people don't feel like they need to rush, uh, cut dates short, not go out to dinner because they may be missing a podcast. So we killed it. I went and had wings and a bucket of Madaya with my son instead. My oldest son, one of my sons. Riding so low. Kukla, are you riding so low? It looks like you are. Any other mods out there? Wait, no, we saw some. All right, guys, I see Mike is uh, at his desk. Unlike the balloon pilot. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Mike. Hi, Mark. How are you? I uh I spaced and thought we were do Thursday was whiskey and wisdom so I you yeah. know rolled out rolled out of bed and here we are right but I got oh uh, no hey it's not a bad guess because they used to be Thursdays oh Glenn Renach yeah. how is it is it good stuff well yeah it's pretty good I got that from uh, Polly Bag in when I was in Manchester in October and oh uh, wow nice and I'm gonna mix it with some Dr Pepper and uh, let you know let you know how it is so I'm not getting any sponsorship money from Dr Pepper. Yeah, no, I'm not getting any for drinking my uh, Jim Beam here. King's Hacienda saying, Mike, good to see you. King's Hacienda, it is good to see you as well, sir. A stock jockey. Flat Earth, Flat Earth. The Mark and Mike show. It's been too long. Oh, yeah. Cheap yeah. Trick. I a, sorry, I, I don't think we did it since uh, since your 9-11 friend lost the debate to me. <laughs> sorry, did I say that out loud? Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> I can't say that word. Sorry. Oh, shit. Ah. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's been a while, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back with you. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you very much and carrying us through all this stuff. Uh, Paul, I have a heavy bag for my grandson to take out his aggression on. I wanted to send it to you today, Mark. I do. I, I, I probably overshot, but I did say things that needed to be said. It's therapeutic sometimes. Did you uh, get to hear the tirade, Mike? I did not. There, there was a tirade this morning. Was it this morning? I uh, may or may not have dropped an f bomb or two. Oh, well, that happens every once in a while. That happens every once in a while on the Mark Z show. Yeah, hey, just somebody saying I need to tell the truth about the handlers and what the handlers were telling me to say or telling me not to say. No, I don't have handlers. Not gonna go there. Yeah. Um, I look at handlers the same way I look at all of these people saying that I need to sue this person for that flag. Or in this world court, over, I don't need to do any of that. I don't need somebody to tell me I'm sovereign. I don't need some court to acknowledge me being sovereign. I'm sovereign. My God made me sovereign. My yeah. creator made me sovereign. I get up in the morning, and maybe everybody else should do this. I look myself in the mirror, and one of the things I tell myself is, God gave me free will. I am sovereign, created in his image. Um, yeah, you I, know, it's, I, I just, it, it is really interesting because... I know a lot of people in that movement that did a lot of that stuff. And, you know, you, you keep they they keep they've gone through a lot of processes. There's some videos out there mm -hmm. of people like, you know, basically just answering every question. But the thing is, these people are clever and they've got a million questions to try to pull you back into the system. And the best thing is to just not cooperate, to just, you know, make your statement and then just answer every statement with the same thing. It's like answer every every question with a question. It's um, it, it's, 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 it's a whole it's this whole thing where if they change your genetics, then they can own you like chattel. Yeah. This whole thing, well, they gave you an mRNA. Now you, now they have engineered you. Now you can be their property. Bullshit. They still don't get to own somebody if they've changed no. your DNA. That no. is you admitting 
That is you committing to their system. Don't commit to their system. That no. is some of the craziest thinking. And then people get so wrapped up in it. And I see they present it. It sounds sounds like a really cool argument, but it all falls apart when you give it faith and freedom. Uh, you just, I mean, just look at them. And don't, don't sign anything. Say, no, no matter what. They, yeah, don't sign anything, Mark. No matter what they put in front of you to say, I'm not signing that. Nope. I don't care if you, you know, nope. stick me in a stick me in the in the cooler for 10 days. I'm not signing anything. I'm not cooperating because your yeah. signature is what they need to move forward. So that's all. And, and even that to me is crap. You don't need, I mean, um, here I can autograph it. I can put, you know, Mark and Mike the Muppet or something, whatever Skeflo likes to that, uh, call us, but um, say that this and this do go fairly well together. Really right? well? Nice. Yeah. yeah, not bad. Yeah, I just you're you're giving them power when you say, right. Hey, I need a flag filed here. I need them to say that I'm free. I don't need any of that crap. Yeah, no, you don't. Anyways. You absolutely do not. So I have some uh I have some news that may be related to the typical topic of the day, if you'd like to present. Oh, sure, that. absolutely. I got my friend, this friend I call the broker. And um, he is brokering some big bond deals and, you know, boxes of uh, dragon bonds and all these things. And he's been working on these. There's very complex agreements that he works on. And um, he sent me out today. You know, we, we've been back and forth. It's next week. It's next week. It's next week. He sent me out today at, uh, about uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, everything is set on my first closing. Funds are verified. The authentication is being set up by the with the bank right now. It's going to take about a week to complete the process. He also says funds are released in Zurich for at least one of the sovereign groups. I guess that would be, mm -hmm. you know, well, we all know what they are. Um, and I have no idea about the 4B timing. <laughs> so, but it's an indication that, you know, it's another indication I have from a side thing that everything is moving forward. So. Yeah, it's, I'm getting some reports of um, bond folks receiving money, a couple of the deals, but I haven't been able to like put it in absolute concrete. But for me, the exciting thing is we're getting measurable movement now. It's not right. like the secret. It's not a question. We know we know the process has started. We just don't know when our turn is yet, but we know our turn's coming. And that's people yeah, somehow I mean, have to find some comfort in that. With Iraq openly talking about revaluing their currency that's pretty exciting stuff that's never happened before for sure so uh i just wish they'd get on with it so right <laughs> yeah it's like come on guys just flip the switch flip the switch mike wants to go i don't know go house shopping in vegas i thought you might enjoy that one so i left it up phone 64 watch it for 45 minutes had an extraordinary peaceful feeling that's not common so you know that. Later, my husband since. Uh, oh wait, had I'm scary. sorry. That's okay. I'll try to find it for you again. Okay. You had a high security clearance. This is getting to the good part. Uh, I had a high security clearance and later was assigned in the Air Force to Project Blue Book. I know he believes in them big time after taking pilot site uh, reports. I guess. Yeah, I'm guessing site endings reports or briefings yeah. or. Yeah. Yeah, you talk to these guys and they've all seen something weird. It's kind of like. It's kind of like if you sit around a barbecue and you talk to people, everybody has a weird story. Everybody has a ghost. Everybody has a coincidence that can't possibly be a coincidence. Everybody has a UFO sighting. Everybody has something. So to sit there and pretend that there isn't this mysterious world all around us that we don't acknowledge is just crazy stuff. It's crazy. I mean, come on. You got to get everybody if you just sit down and ask them, they'll come talk. They'll talk to you about it. You just got to put a few in them and and get them uh, get them relaxed enough that they will tell you, uh, hi Kukla, that they will tell you their story. And um, a lot of people don't want to believe any of that crazy stuff, but it's true. A lot of it's true. So yeah, yes, it is. Uh, I'm working in the background trying to find the uh, fallout or the air quality one for um, yeah. Um, so I, I made you solo so they don't have to look well, at me. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, maybe I can just go ahead and talk about some of the Project Bluebeam stuff. And, you know, because awesome. of all, all the UFO sightings, right? We've had we've had some UFO sightings. We had kind of over the course, what was it the last weekend? We had we had one in Alaska shot shot at or shot down. Couldn't find it. We thought we shot it down. Couldn't find it. We had one in Canada shot down. 
We had one in Michigan shot down. We had airspace over Montana closed. This is coming on the heels, of course, of the Chinese balloon that was shot down in uh, just off the coast of South Carolina. And then we had a meteor explode over Paris. Did you see that video? That's incredible. Just so we had all this stuff in the sky. And uh, of course, everybody's talking about this. And then, then we had the kind of extraordinary um, comments from John Kennedy, the senator from Louisiana yesterday. Did you see that, Mark, where he came out? And he, he had had a classified briefing. And he said, we were told last week this stuff had been going on since 2019. It goes back to at least 2017. And of course, we all know it goes back even further than that. It goes back a lot further than that, he said. And I'm wondering, was he meaning all the way back to Roswell and the Cape Girardeau case and you know 1942? Or what exactly did he mean by that? But he said 2017. And then he said, you know, lock your doors tonight. And he's a smart aleck. But that was not said with sarcasm. That was like, he was shaken. He was clearly shaken by by whatever he saw in that in that classified report. So then everybody starts thinking about well, what does this mean? And and you know, we've talked about in the UFO community for years about the fake staged alien invasion scenario. And the scenario is is that when you get to the end of things, right? You get to the end uh end of the world scenario. In in you know, in the UFO community I don't think anybody besides me really knows much about the financial stuff. They're not paying attention to it. I I am, of course, thankfully. I feel thankful for that. Um, and so when they think of it, they're thinking, well, when, when things get to the end and they need to take over the entire world because, you know, an asteroid is coming or the aliens are, you know, not going to, I don't know, it's not going to say, but there's this plan to stage a fake alien invasion to start a war with the aliens. And part of that story comes from um, Werner von Braun's personal secretary. I want to say her name is Carol, but I forget. Carol Rosen, I think, says that on his deathbed, that von Braun told her, and this is in 77, 78, Hi, Rosemary. The von, von Braun told her, OK, the Russians aren't going to last much longer. When they're gone, it's going to be terrorists from the Middle East that are going to be the enemy. And then the last one is going to be the alien invasion. And that's when they're going to take over everything. So she told that story. She's been telling that story for 15 or 20 years. Now, then other people say, um, well, that's Project Bluebeam. And so there's a story around called Project Bluebeam. You know, like everybody knows about MK Ultra, the mind control stuff, and everybody knows um, about these different, um, you know, Project uh, Looking Glass or whatever the um, time travel thing supposedly is. And um, all that stuff might be true. But Bluebeam was actually put out by a Canadian investigative journalist named Serge Monast. Um, Serge, Serge Monast. My name is Serge Monast. I knew a guy uh, named Serge Andrescu in Canada when I worked there. We changed his nameplate to Serge and Rescue. Anyway, um, so Serge Manass said that there he had heard from his contacts inside the government that there was a plan for what they called Project Bluebeam. Now, people mistake Project Bluebeam with the fake alien invasion, which is two different things. Project Bluebeam was the plan to create basically the second coming of Christ in the skies over our heads in a way that would be so realistic combined with explosions, explosions everywhere, you know, trains exploding and disasters and all this stuff. And Jesus would come down and say, I have returned and you will join with me. And then there might even be a fake rapture. There might be some people kidnapped or abducted or whatever technology they might use to, to grab people. And then like in the middle in the middle east you know muhammad would appear in mecca and a buddha would appear in asia and they would all say the same thing which is that all of your churches and authorities are no good and you have to form a new one world government does that sound familiar mark a new Very. one world government which was going to be their fake one world government. They were going to use these holograms and these technologies. Now, when this came out in in the 1980s or 90s, it was pretty 
bizarre stuff because we didn't see the technology demonstrated. We've long since seen that tech, that kind of technology demonstrated, you know, with the Pope walking behind the curtain and then zap disappearing into the, in the midair, that kind of thing. Um, so you have these two different scenarios, one of which is Project Bluebeam, which is actually the fake return of the Christ and the fake alien invasion. And sometimes people get those two conflated, but it's really all the same thing. And the important thing, though, Mark, I think is this is that this is the last arrow in their quiver, okay? The bad guys don't have any more bullets to shoot after this. So if we are really ramping up to a fake alien invasion and perhaps a rescue by Jesus or something, I don't know. If that's what we're ramping up to, Mark, that's exciting to me because that means they're almost done. We're almost, at, they are at the end of their rope and they are pulling out their all stops, the very last thing they have the last bullet they have to shoot. They're like Custer at Little Bighorn. I only got one bullet left. Let's let's give it a shot. Maybe you can take out, you know, Sitting Bull or whoever. I forget who the, the chieftain was there. But, you know, same kind of thing. And, and that's to me, that's pretty exciting because it means that we're right at the end of this. If they're really pulling us out and looking at the coverage, it sure looks to me like they're really trying to pump this fake alien invasion scenario. But I mean, people are gonna. Do you think people are gonna buy it? I don't think people are gonna buy it. Um, yeah, I'm not certain I'm uh, buying it or not. But I mean, uh, to me, uh, it's interesting that we're seeing the whole Project Blue Beam like all over the place. Oh yeah. I mean, from press, uh, national press to truthers. I mean, you name it. It is suddenly like front and center in this conversation. I mean, no. I guess the positive is people are questioning what they're seeing. I guess the, I don't even know where to go with that one. Nobody believes what we're seeing. Yeah. And, and well, the thing is, you know, it, it, it shows me that the white hats, if they exist, have done a pretty good job with convincing people that everything is BS, right? <laughs> because the, the fact that people just aren't buying it, you know, and, and it, you know, I mean, give me a break. It's like, you know, give me, give me a break. Aliens, that's what you're going to pull out. There's, you know, there's Boston Robotics, right? Which has these dog robots. And, and the craziest thing I heard today was they're going to wrap these up in fake alien suits and send these dog robots out to pretend like they're attacking people. That's the alien invasion. So I don't know, maybe, maybe Blue Beam will be part of it. Maybe it'll be fake alien invasion, fake Jesus comes in and saves us. But Jesus just happens to tell you, well, we have to have a one world government, um, which is exactly the opposite of what God said, right? God said- Yeah, that's a good yeah. point though, because you know, what happens if they do break out of fake Jesus? We're not saying Jesus is fake, guys. I very much believe uh, Lord and Savior. Yeah, no, yeah. No. Yeah, I'm totally committed here. Um, but wouldn't it be- in character for them to attempt to use our own religious beliefs to control us in that way um which is very anti-biblical i mean you know he's yeah. telling us we're sovereign they gave us free will the pros and the cons to go with it um but then to come in and say we need one world whatever no we're going to bring all religions under one we're going to do one world uh government yeah that would be that wouldn't surprise me to see them try something like that with their blue beam well, and by the way, I'm not telling you this is what I think is going to happen. I'm just telling you what I hear from other people. And I think it's a, it's a load of crap. And and that Jesus is not going to be the real Jesus. He's going to be a giant sky Jesus that's, you know, made up of, uh, it's not really him. And uh, they are, you know, I think if they try to use this, they're in, they're in, that means that they're in big, big trouble. That means that they're desperate. And that means that we're winning. And, and so in some ways, it's kind of exciting. Yeah, yeah, you bring, and I had not thought of it that way. I was like, oh crap, what else are they throwing at us? Because so many are already on the ropes. But no, you bring a good point. And Scooter does too. Fake Jesus is called the Antichrist. If they did yeah. try to put somebody out like that, I we're going to have to get really good at discernment. The thing is with the Antichrist, it's like if Hitler wasn't the Antichrist or Stalin, who who is? I mean, are we really... I don't know. Are they trying to re reconvince us that we're at the end of Revelations? Or maybe we already made it through Revelations. Maybe World War II was Revelations. I mean, I don't know. It's it's just, 
it's just crazy. So I, uh, you know, um, they we're gonna we're getting we're getting a lot of BS spewed at us right now, and we just have to be we have to be very cautious. The other warning I got from a spiritual perspective is remember, guys, that what you see on your screens, okay, that that's not reality. You know, don't there there might be a World War Three. There might be a war against space aliens on your TV, which is what's happening right now. But is there anything happening in your neighborhood? You know, unless you live in Ohio, Mark, things are just pretty much the same here. Pretty much the same in Washington as they have been. Nothing's changed. So pay attention to what's going on in your community. Don't buy into their fear that they're trying to create on TV, like they're doing with all these UFO sightings. People are talking about this stuff. Guess what? If you turned your TV off after the Super Bowl, you, you wouldn't know anything about any of this. Just turn it off. Just stop listening to them. Deal with the reality around you. Right. And that's the message I got was deal with the reality around you, not with what they're trying to convince you of on the screen, because they can't even roll fake Damar Hamlin out there, you know, um, with with a with a tattoo one day and not a tattoo the next day and a tattoo. And, you know, it's like, geez, can you at least get the tats right, guys, on the clones? I mean, seriously. So sorry. No, I can't I'm I keep forgetting what I can't say on this on your show. I don't want to get you in trouble because I say whatever I want on my show, and then I just delete it afterwards and point everybody to Rumble. So, <laughs> yeah, well, Rumble's being a little bit of an itch uh, again today, and just refused to take a live upload. Yeah, um, it does that on occasion. It, it does work for me. I've only had one glitch in the last six months or so, but. There is some money I've got in Rumble there that people have given to me that I can't I can't get out. Well, just click on the button where it says cash out. And I'm like, there's no button there. I can't right. find the button. <laughs> so, and you can't get like a real person at Rumble to say, hey, I'm having a tech issue. What am I doing? Or have I pushed something wrong? How do you do this? I mean, nothing. Well, I have I got I have got some emails back. I've had good luck with their help, but you know, they said, oh, well, you got to confirm, you got to confirm your email that we sent you. And I'm like, well, I did that eight weeks ago. So then I confirm it again and I still go in and there's still see that money sitting there, a couple hundred bucks, you know, and nope, nope. So, you know, Mark, I don't know, I don't know what's going on other than I think I, the thing is, is that look, this, this is, we used to think in the UFO community that they would do this because they wanted to get control over us before the cataclysmic event, before the asteroid, before the real alien invasion, before World War III, before whatever scenario. But here's the thing. This is all to stop the financial reset. This is all to stop us from having what God has given to us, already given to us. So this is about the financial reset. So that's why I find it so exciting, because it's not about... It's not about aliens. It's not about any of that stuff. It's about stopping what we're looking at. That's the, that's what's on the plate. That's what they're desperate to try to distract people from. And that's what they're desperate to cover up and, and prevent. You know, there is the story that 9-11, um, you know, that they were going to do Nisara that day. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I hear that. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you think about this one, I mean, uh, in, in the last, uh, what, 50 plus years, we've had two presidents that wanted the reset. Um, and that's it. We're talking post JFK. You had Reagan, you had Trump, the only two yep. that actually fought for it, not against yep. it. Yep. Um, and it's been an all out war from any any other administration. And even the administrations of Trump and Reagan fought it. Uh, they just did it behind Trump's back. They did it behind Reagan's back. Oh, yeah. some interesting times. You know, and and um, I I've heard other people that have other intel. I don't have much in the way of intel connections, but they they do. And I've heard them say that yeah, um, that you know Trump wanted this to go through but every time he delayed it it was to get a better deal for the, the american people 
a better deal on the Zim, a better deal on the on the Boulevard, those kinds of things. So that's what they said, that he did stop it, but he wanted to get everybody a better deal. And I'm kind of wishing, well, I wish you would have gotten that deal before, before you pretend walked out of the White House. Gary Seven from Star Trek. Yeah, see, you caught that reference too. I've caught that one. Um, Gary brings up a great point that I love pointing out to people because they'll be like, well, if God's in charge, why is it happening? If you read the Bible, you realize that this is this is a bit of Satan's reign. Of course, he has to reign through lies instead of directly, but uh, he doesn't even hide anymore. Um, Christ's reign is coming. And I'm looking forward to those at least a thousand years. If I'm going to live for eternity, I would like to point out that a thousand years really is not cutting it. I'm going to need a little more. <laughs> I'll take a thousand years, though, Mark. Yeah, I'll start with it. <laughs> All right. I love this one. Kukla did bring this one up. And I know we said we were going to talk Project Blue Beam and that kind of, you know, have fun with Mike. But I think this is a very important story to cover right now. We need to cover Mike's lottery story. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. Okay, so besides the RV, which I believe in with all my heart, and I have since 2009 when my brother Dave first figured it out for me, and I was like, you know, I think you're right. Because we all knew there was need for a financial reset, right? And I was working on other things, administrative processes, Mark. You may or may not have known about all those things going on in the early 2000s and and uh, trying to, you know, trying to, like, figuring out what money really was and how, and that they wanted to do a reset <clears throat> after the 2008 crash and get money into the hands of people and the church groups and were involved in a lot of stuff anyway. But I play the, I play the lottery and you know, it's like three times a week they have drawings, I think Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'd play the local lotto game and I'd play Powerball and mega millions and all that stuff. And it's just like, okay, you know, it's fun stuff. So um, about at this one store, a store called Fred Meyer down the street, which is a chain here in Washington state. I'm there one day about 2013, 2014. And this guy says, Hey, I was buying lottery tickets. And this old guy says to me, he says, Hey, use that machine right there. The one on the end. And I'm like, why? And he goes, cause I, I won 250,000 in that machine about six months ago. And I was like, crap. So, you know, there is some, there is some thought that luck flows to the same place. Right. God's lottery, God's way of telling you he's listening, but you're asking for the wrong thing. Well, uh, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible, but yeah, Doctor Jekyll, you were in my you were in my stream the other day when I was talking about this. So <clears throat> I'm like, okay. So I started trying to play that you know that specific machine out of the three that were sitting there. And one time a few years ago, Barkley the dog, who you may hear bark here, he needed some vet work, and I was like, wow, I'm really short of cash. How am I going to pay for this? And I, I stick my lotto ticket in my local Washington State lottery. And I got five out of six. So I won a thousand dollars. Boom, paid for Barclays Lotto. And I, I'm like, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Now I'm sitting there thinking I could have gotten six out of six and had, you know, five million dollars in the bank and, and been even happier, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about that thousand dollars because it paid for Barclays vet, vet, vet bill. So I keep buying tickets and time goes by and you know i just don't feel quite right mark if i don't if i if i miss a, if i miss a drawing i just don't feel quite right so then i was talking to my friend jen who i do my show with on uh mondays wednesdays and fridays who's a spiritual medium who talks to the angels and tells me what's gonna go on in my life and other people's lives and whether you buy, buy any of that or not she she talked to me about how to create something in prayer you have to speak it out loud because the the sound vibrations make it more real so i'm like okay i'm doing this the wrong way i need to keep doing this so i, I developed this little prayer which is you know dear lord jesus christ um please bless these tickets and fill them with love amen right and nothing really changed and then i thought well maybe i'm not doing it right that's not really asking for the jackpot so i said okay dear lord jesus christ please bless these tickets Fill them with love and the grand prize jackpot money. And so I started doing that about two weeks ago. Amen. Because you have to have the thought to complete it, the amen at the end. So I did I did that. And about, oh, the second or third time, it was a week ago Monday. And I did that. You know, dear Lord Jesus Christ, please bless this Powerball ticket. Fill it with love and the grand prize jackpot money. Amen. Then I got my ticket and I walked out. 
took Barkley to the park. And next day, you know, Dave and I were hanging around and uh, I took the dog to the park. And I see this story on YouTube about how the winning Powerball ticket was sold in Washington State. And that never happens. Usually it's Indiana or Ohio or New Jersey or someplace, you know, because they have hundreds of thousands, millions of lottery outlets that are selling Powerball and National Lottery all over the country, mm -hmm. right? Probably millions of stores and convenience stores and everything. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. So we took the dog to the park, get down, we go to our Fred Meyer, and I, I'm walking in and I had to pick up some other stuff, but I'm walking in and I'm thinking, well, I got to better check my tickets, you know? So I walk in and I see these news crews there and I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, maybe they're just picking up some footage of people buying the lottery and all that, you know? And I get there and I get to the machine where I'm going to check it and I, I'm getting my ticket out. And the lady with the camera starts getting really close to me and I'm like, is this the store where they sold the winning ticket? And she says, yeah, last night, the day that I prayed this all in. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I stuck my ticket under the little red bean. And I won, Mark. I won $4. $765 million Powerball lotto. And I won $4. And somebody else got $400 million. My take would have been $200 million because I would have split it with my brother. Um. And I thought, God hates me because, <laughs> because look, I'm just going to tell you, I created that with my prayer. I created that. I got that money. I funneled it all the way through to that machine. And I'm not positive it was that machine, but I'm, as you say, Mark, positive it was that machine. Right. Um, and I probably can ask them which one of the machines at some point, if they still got it there, I'll ask them which one of the machines was it. And I was just like, I did. I split the $4 from my brother. Well, I got four more tickets and none of them won. Lady, lady guy. So, so Poor Dave. it's like, it's like, <laughs> I, I'm like, okay, there's a message here, God, and I'm not sure what the hell it is, but here's the thing. Okay. It, it, Mark, if you look at the randomness of, of the numbers and everything that happened, there's no way it didn't get to that machine without my influence is the way I look at it. Because, you, you know, even if you, even if it was in Washington state, there's hundreds, tens of probably 10,000 lotto machines, lottery powerball machines in the state. It could have been anywhere or anywhere else in the 98092, but it was my Fred Meyer, my literally I could walk there in 15 minutes. That's how far away it was from my house. So either it got intercepted and somebody else got it, which, you know, good for them, or or God was trying to send me a message of yeah, I hate your guts and I'm laughing at you, Mike. But here's the part that I didn't add. Even though I spoke that prayer, and this is the part that you people should be excited about. I spoke the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, please bless this ticket and fill it with love and the grand prize jackpot money. Amen. Right after that, I had a thought in my head. Unless the RV is going to happen in the next month then I don't need it. Uh -huh. So what he did was he went ahead and he blessed the machine and the tickets. He brought it right there and said, but you don't need it because you get the RV. I think I'm going to run with that one. I like the way that one sounds. Yeah, I think that's true. Sorry, that's a long, long, I told the story the long way, but I mean, that that's what I think it means. And that, that, and you look at everything else, how close we are. And um, that's what I think it means. So yeah, that was like it. have faith, have faith. Trust in me. And, you know, they always say the universe, when you ask the universe for something, the answer is never no. It's always yes, or I've got something better in mind. So there you go. Um, I like Amy's here. Could the balloons be dropping items needed to pull this off? Because blue beams, yeah. a hologram could. Yes, yes. And then that means then who's shooting them down? The good guys or the bad guys, right? Right. There's a good question. Um, I love this one. Uh, can't you take a joke, Mike? God has a wicked sense of humor. And guys, <laughs> there is no doubt God does have a wicked sense of humor. And yeah. I appreciate it. And I would like to think that because he made me in his image, that's why I have such a wicked awesome yeah. sense of humor. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, there's no point in me ever playing the lottery again because I will never get that close to a grand prize ever again. So it's like, I'm not going to do that. But it was entertaining, Mark. I'd like to, like, well, you know, the RV didn't happen this week, but, you know, I, I've still got all this lotto ticket. Let me check and see who if anybody won the lotto this weekend. Miss being a billionaire by a couple digits in the first number. 
a match four out of five of the Powerball. Ugh, it's, tough. it's tough. Another near miss. Yep. Yeah, uh, Chris wants to know how long. No, he literally said that prayer when he bought the ticket. Uh, the, On what, a, week, a week ago, Monday night. The, the drawing was that night. I think it was that was that Monday. Yeah, pretty sure. So, um, and I had modified the prayer because it wasn't working the way I was saying it because I realized I wasn't being specific enough and saying the grand prize jackpot money, right? Yeah. I was just saying, hey, look, was money. Well, four dollars is money, Mark. Mm -hmm. You know, true. So, hey, God tells us when we pray, be specific. So yeah, you know, I'm, I, I, I try not to use generalities. I try to be pretty specific. I like this one. Who else has this superpower? Sarcasm. Out the argue. Sarcasm is my superpower. It is so horribly, horribly underrated and misunderstood. My superpower, Mark, is that I'm invisible to women under 35. That's probably a good thing for them. That's that's God, you know, blessing them. I just am invisible. I'm just, I don't exist. Uh, uh, I love this one, Mike. Don't forget about the bonus you won, you know, the verbal spanking you got from Jen. I, I wouldn't call it that, but yes. <laughs> My, My next-door neighbor's one. parents won the lottery twice in Florida. You know, there was a guy, Mark, I don't know if you're, you're a Steelers fan. You remember Thomas Hollywood Henderson? Oh, yeah. The Dallas Cowboys? Linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys famously said, Terry Brad before the Super Bowl, Terry Bradshaw is so dumb he couldn't spell cat if he spotted him in the C and the A. Um, and big loudmouth guy made, you know, made million dollars, give or take, playing football back in the late 70s and 80s. After he retired, a few years after he retired, he won a lottery, he won 6.5 million in, in a lot in, you know, Powerball or something. And then three years later, he won it again. He won 10 million. So there are people that, and by the way, if you do get a win, if you do get five out of six, or, you know, you get a substantial chunk of money, um, you, you absolutely should keep playing the lottery because statistics show that when you win a, a second or, or even first prize, that your chances of winning again in the next year go way up beyond beyond the possibility of uh, coincidence. Because once it happens, then you believe it is possible. I'm a firm believer. Um, I mean, the Bible tells us, you know, to, we, we need to visualize those things. I'm a firm believer yep. that you bring into the, call it the secret, call it um, frequencies. I mean, I think the Bible, the Bible gives us the secrets to a yep. life full of prosperity. We got to quit with the Oh, oh, woe is me. I'm the most, I'm never going to win anything. I'm never going to accomplish anything. I'm never going to be wealthy. That's stinking thinking. And the Bible tells us, you know, all right, I've changed my approach on that one. I speak life. Um, I speak gratitude. Well, Mark, why don't you try try uh, that prayer or your version of it and, you know, pick up, pick up a couple tickets there in P Puerto Rico and, uh, you know, who knows? You know, throw, I like throw it. Your or your friend Micah Bone if it, if it works for you, you know? Give me a, give me a little uh, help here. <laughs> invite you down. Uh, Patriot Bob, I, I did know. For those who haven't seen this one, I just happened to see that one rolling through. And I think that's one of the best Jesse Waters I've seen. I don't remember. It was, what, uh, Patriot Mom a week, two weeks ago, maybe more. Um, he, Jesse Waters said the food pyramid is a Ponzi scheme, too. He broke into it. It's like, who funds it? Who comes up with the money to say? You'll notice that they'll tell you cereals and grains. Even though all the research out there tells you that's one of the lowest you should have on it in your starches. Um, no, I thought yeah. it was great. Jesse Waters did a great one on the food pyramid. Yeah. Does anybody believe the food pyramid anymore? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I am uh, reading through some of these. Uh, my ex-husband was told by his father his family has no luck. It becomes generational, Little Wing, when yep. you do that, uh, that, that, that struggle. I think that's part of why it takes, now in the U.S., it takes almost six generations to go from, let's say you come here as an immigrant or you get very down on your luck, you, your family's lost everything. It takes roughly six generations now to climb from uh, lower class to middle class. I'm not even talking like upper middle class or wealthy. Uh, America used to be famous because you could do it more often, but now on average, it takes almost six generations. I think part of that is because 
it's generational stinking thinking. They tell you that um, the women in your family say you're never going to have a nice man. All the women in our family are doomed by some witch in 1920, whatever, just some craziness out there. And then they speak it into existence. They start saying, well, I'm never going to have this. I'm never going to have that because of this. And you're not going to have it because you've defeated yourself. You've spoken that bad luck into existence. Well, that's the thing. You've spoken it into existence. And the other thing, you know, is I've been told by two different psychics and psychic readings that, you know, that's not how you're going to get your money, Mike. You're not going to get a lottery. I, I didn't care, Mark. I kept saying, I'm just trying to give God, you know, look, I know what I, the amount of money roughly that I need to fulfill this set of dreams. You know, I have different dreams for different levels, right? <clears throat> but to fulfill this set of dreams, I, I need about this much money. And I, I just try to give God as many different ways as I could think of for him to provide that for me, right? And so don't let anybody tell you what you can or can't, you know, your family doesn't have luck or just fight that, fight that. Uh, Gypsy Baron, you're right. Uh, maybe I can call it my challenge, my whatever, whatever God's got for it. But you're right, Gypsy Baron, you're right. I got to stop saying I have one and start saying I have great health and uh, speak it into existence. Yep. Deal with it. Chase it. I, I mean, I, 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 like I do know put down. I was going to say, I, I do know people that like do the speaking thing and their eyes get better. You know, I've, kn I've known people. It's like they don't need their glasses anymore. And I'm like, how the hell did they do that? No surgery. Just just speaking out to God and saying, you know, please heal my eyes. Now I'm sitting here reading all the comments and I'm like, all right, I'm man. Uh, K. Kress, I saw you post this, but um. Yeah, I don't know where to go on this one. Uh, Phil G just read a message that was being announced during the Super Bowl. It did not occur when he asked why not to the center. The reply was credible threat. Did you notice that they had a lot of people spread around and on the stands and everywhere else in full-blown hazmat suits? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. So, I mean, there had to be something going on. That's not a normal thing to see at a sporting event, people hanging out in hazmat suits. So, I mean. No, and, and the. The thing is, though, is how long are we going to let them get away with this credible threat crap? I mean, we had, we the, the the summit between Trump and Kim was broken up in Hanoi because of a credible threat from Hasma bin Laden uh, of a suitcase nuke. I know, I I tracked that whole story. I know that story's true. Um, and then supposedly there was a credible threat at the inauguration of Joe Biden. If you arrest everybody, there's a credible threat. Well. OK, so there's a credible threat, you know, I mean, yeah, at some point you got to punch through, punch through the membrane, break through and just say we're going forward regardless of what these bastards try to pull off. Right. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't. That's OK. We'll, we'll get away with that one. Uh, Gypsy Baron hazmat suits. That was the halftime show. Yeah, was, <laughs> it looked like people in hazmat suits or they were sperms or something or i don't know yeah I, rihanna looked like a blood clot i mean that's what she looked like she looked like that big cloud over turkey did you see that two weeks ago now supposedly now the cloud is I, okay there's a word for that cloud that starts with a v and ends with an a and i'm not going to say it on mark's show but it, that's what it looked like it looks like a big giant space yeah it's uh interesting and, and now there's one in argentina you know, no, there's one in Argentina. So I don't know. Mark, those were white blood cells. Rihanna was the red blood cell. <laughs> you weren't the only one that thought blood cells. Yeah. Can we just uh, have some wholesome family entertainment at halftime next year, like Kiss? Yeah, right. Prince. You know, some some really Prince. wholesome things. Prince with the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Some wholesome entertainment. Let's go back to the wholesome entertainment that we yeah, use. Right. That so offensive, right? Let's just put Kiss out there. They're retiring. Let's give them one last shot. Uh, oh, just absolutely sick. Yeah, Rally Sport, we showed the trailer on here, or part of the trailer for that. I mean, Netflix, yeah. I mean, they're telling us everything they are doing. And I think that must be some unspoken requirement that they have to. They put it out there. They're obvious with it. They're not hiding anything anymore. You look at the fashion shows. You look at the celebrities. You look at the wealthy. They don't hide anything. They go to the World Economic Forum. They tell you 
that they're going to take everything. They tell you you're going to eat crickets. They tell you they're going to take your money. They they don't hide anything anymore. Yeah. And people are still running around like they can't see it. I mean, it, you know, what point do you cross over from being an ostrich with your head in the sand to just being a dumb butt with your head up a butt? Um, yeah, I wanted to use profanity there, but I figure I've kind of used up my allotment for the week. Yes, uh, earlier today. Mark cursed already today, so I can't curse and he can't curse anymore. We've used it up. We can't go with any more with any more cursing. Um, yeah, and that that's you know, that's the thing. And that's what Richard Hoagland and I concluded in Dark Mission, my first book with him, was that there's some weird thing at NASA where they have to tell you what they're gonna do. That they have to show you, but they but they aren't gonna ever admit that it, there's a face on Mars, but we're gonna show you the picture so you can figure it out for yourself right but that is the way it works that is the way this this bizarre religion does work which national anthem the white national anthem or the black national anthem all right that's uh to me if we need both then yeah something's broken and that they're yeah, trying to convince us that we need both I means something we're already broken right yeah we're broken uh no stapleton crushed it i mean he did i mean the tears the feeling i mean that that was the highlight i could have stopped right there with it um mary yolo yoli she uh mary runs a uh christian uh news channel down there or news uh based christian based uh program if you don't know mary she's fantastic super lady there's an ongoing shooting in el paso texas at a local high school so the chief of police died about two weeks ago something didn't add up uh so it's ongoing as we speak prayers uh i mean at 9 47 even with the time difference I mean, they've got to be out of school, so I'm wondering what's going on there. Yeah, well, another attempt to take our guns, right? Richard oh. is not a Freemason. Neither am I, even though, where's my tattoo? Yeah, neither am I, okay, again. That so was what is that tattoo then? In Vegas, that was a drunk night in Vegas. So why? <laughs> just... I just got really drunk with this girl who i love very much by the way there was love involved with this girl there always was and we were just riding around in the limo and she's like what should we do now and i'm like let's go get tattoos what tattoo do you want to get oh i'm gonna get the freemasons that'll really mess with people's heads i didn't say mess i used an f word but you know so all right that's, we're exactly gonna have to get that's exactly what it was. And she took pictures of it being done so it's like it's, yeah, we're, i can prove that it was in vegas yeah, okay. So um, next time I take you drinking, I'm going to do exactly what thank you, just love. I'm going to do what Git says. We're totally getting that thing either removed or covered up or changed. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's cover it over. Let's both get let's both get 25K uh, dinar notes on our, on our arms. How about that? Let's do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, my jar is totally overloaded at this point, too. Yeah, not cool, Mike, not cool. I don't know what you were thinking. But she why must is it have not cool? It just, I was just out <laughs> drinking and having a good time in Vegas, and things got out of hand, as they often do. And it didn't stay. It totally anymore. did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the Freemasons are going to uh, hunt you down. Now. Yeah, you, uh, you probably shouldn't have showed anybody that one. Really? Well, what about the alien? And there's God right there, the Yahweh in Hebrew. Come on. Hey, what's the 33 stand for? Uh, 33. Was, As in like was, the year we repealed prohibition and got to drink again? Yeah, no. Well, the 33, actually the 33 is connected to the hyperdimensional physics that I talk about in this super awesome book, The Choice, which is about higher realms. So really what 30, the, the fact that 33 is sacred to these, it's sacred to groups like the, the Freemasons, the Scottish Rite Freemasons, because they know it proves that there is a God, that there is a higher realm and a heaven. And so it's basically heaven is what 33 means. 333 would be even more that way, but that was, I felt too obvious. So anyway. I All right, know, now, now you're a 33rd degree Mason. Is that a thing, guys? I, I really honestly don't know about the whole Mason thing. A 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemason. Oh, wait, nominally the top rank. Boy, I didn't even know that. How do you find out these things? Well, you start looking. I mean, you know, with me, it was it was when I was doing research for Dark Mission with Richard. And, you know, somebody pointed out to us, Ken Johnston, our friend Ken Johnston, Jr., who worked at NASA and 
tile, the lunar module pilots to fly the lunar module, um, was a 32nd degree Scottish Rite Freemason. So he said, yeah, well, you know that that guy was a Freemason. Buzz was a Freemason. And I'm like, what? And then he showed us the picture of how Buzz Aldrin, second man to walk on the moon, took a Masonic ceremonial apron with him in the lunar module. And he and Neil Armstrong uh, performed a Masonic ceremony in the lunar module before they went out for the first spacewalk. And it's all documented. Nobody can argue with me on that. And um, and they made him a 33rd right afterwards, and he brought the flag back, and it was presented to the people at the House of the Temple and all that stuff. And so we're going to look at how everybody that was in a position of authority at NASA during Apollo was either a Freemason or a Nazi. And guess what? The SS traced their religion right back to the same root source religions of the Freemasons, or they were people like black magic people, like I can't mention his name, but he's fairly well known from the 30s that formed JPL. So they were all magicians or SS or Freemasons, everybody at the top, including a whole bunch of the astronauts. You know why Neil Armstrong got to go out first? So he could take pictures of Buzz Aldrin because every picture from Apollo 11 is of Buzz Aldrin, not of Neil Armstrong. He had the camera. They only had one camera. That's why they sent him out first. Right. Well, I'm still trying to figure out who was taking the pictures when the capsule, the lunar module, was landing. Well, that that was just a they had a 16 millimeter film camera through the uh, through the window that they had running during the descent. No, I mean, the one that was taking the picture from outside of it as it was landing. Oh, I don't think there's any pictures of that. If there are, that's that's fake. Nobody, nobody took that. Nobody ever did that. (laughs) So Um, I know of anyway. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I've been to the moon astral traveling. That, now, that's kind of curious, though, while we're at it, because, I mean, how do we go with this one? God told us a lot of people were going to have powers. Jesus, excuse me, told us a lot of people were going to have powers. They named a lot of them pretty specifically. Um, and, you know, some of them I question, you know, where the roots of the power come. But, like, astral travel. I know right. we have a tremendously capable mind um we're very powerful beings we were made in the image of the most powerful being and jesus said we would perform miracles like he did and more Mm -hmm. astral travel how many people here feel like you have that power i mean i've traveled you know in a dream state uh and seen things and then i'm like whoa and then you are there in person you're like it's exactly how um and I, how would i know that and you you, you kind of have those questions in your head but any do we have any like people that practice astral travel or remote viewing well not me jen does remote viewing um i i don't ever ask i astral traveled once when i was four and i got chased and shot at by aliens so i never did that again <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think, Mark, those are alternate states of consciousness. I think we exist on different levels and we can do things in our dreams that we can't do in real life. So. I love well, yeah, there is There is some film of the of this of the lunar module taking off. That was the camera they left. They just left a camera there and controlled it remotely. And- but not landing, taking off. Yeah, but ha- before we had in- before we had like you know internet and we could broadcast um, footage like that. Uh, I mean, I guess we had television. I don't know if they had a VCR on board. I mean, how did they get the the footage of it back from that camera? Did they go down? I mean, we oh, were still it, using film. It was, it was a TV broadcast. It was a TV broadcast. They had TV broadcasts and they had 16 millimeter film that they brought back and developed. So you never saw you never saw the landing on TV when they landed because that was all 16 millimeter 16 millimeter film from the lunar module window. So they, they would flip it on when they when they rolled over so that you could see the lunar surface on all the missions. It's, it's great footage. It's great to watch. Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm enjoying some of the back and forth guys. You're welcome to have any opinion you want on these. I, I just, I I often get curious when I am, uh, seeing them, reading them, etc. 
I know I make uh, people mad and all I'm doing is telling you what I think I know. I mean, we should do a we should do a fake did we fake the moon landings episode sometime and people can just throw anything at me they want and I'll try to answer it as best I can and cite you references. And, um yeah, I mean you you're one of those that believe we actually landed. Do you believe yeah. we found a hollow moon there? Well, yeah, I think it's there is a lot of evidence that it's hollow from the seismic experiments we did. Um, and remember, everybody knows the story about how they they crashed a lunar module ascent stage into the moon and measured it. And it rang like a bell for two hours or 14 hours. And that experiment. Oh, I just got a nader from the Middle East uh, update on my YouTube. Anyway, um, there was a secret experiment on that same mission, Mark, on Apollo 16. You know what that secret experiment was, which is still classified? It was called Chapel Bell. So what do you think that, that was all about? So in other words, they did that in order to take some of the information and be able to keep it classified. That's why they had that on that mission on Apollo 16. So uh, yeah, they're hiding stuff from us. And, and, and by the way, what could possibly be worth still having classified as top secret uh, 50 years after the moon landings? Mark, right. do you think why I mean, been maybe that? somebody was watching like some of the leaked audio or recorded audio we've heard. They're watching us. Well, again, Ken Johnson uh, said that, and Marv Zarnick, another guy that, that Hoagland and I work with. Oh, what um, was his name again? Ken Johnston and Marvin Zarnick. And oh, Richard. Marvin. I, I thought you said Mark Zarnick. No, no, like, yeah, not, Mark, not Mark Zar. Uh, he was CZ. Zarnik was C-Z-A-R-N-I-K. He actually is one of the guys who solved the rendezvous and docking equation with Buzz Aldrin. They wrote Buzz's uh, doctoral dissertation together. He was the engineer to figure out how to dock to space, get two spacecraft close and then dock in space. So he was a brilliant guy. And um, uh, he said that they both said, both Ken and Marv said that that story was buzzing around um, NASA within 30 minutes of Apollo 11 touching down about the spacecraft on the edge of the crater. So people say, oh, it's not a real story. But again, if everybody was talking about it at the time, then there's some legs to that story. That's what I think. Yep. Have you ever listened to any of the Julie Green stuff? She has been eerily accurate. Um, not 100%, but about as close as humanly possible, in my opinion. Julie yeah, Green has stated, we will see miracles with our own eyes. People will be healed. Deaf will hear. Blind will see. And people in wheelchairs will get up and walk. Whew, I'm in. Sounds like a med bed to me, doesn't right? it? Right. <laughs> Diane, I want new teeth. Oh, I just uh, had 3800 bucks worth of work done on my teeth. Now, your take on this one, Bases oh, yeah. on Mars. Yeah, well, I mean, I've written a bunch of books about Mars. I don't know where they are. They're around here somewhere. Um yeah and i mean you can see the ruins of the old ones and you see stuff that looks fairly modern and and you know there was a really great thing we put in i put in ancient aliens on mars one or two but they did infrared uh imagery photography of this area called sidonia where the so-called face on mars um exists and it has ground penetrating capability and it reflected back heat and the pattern it reflected back was a city there was literally a city under the ground. And in order for the infrared camera, if they told us the truth about the sensitivity of the camera, the only way that they could have picked them up is if the lights were still on, right? Right out of the movie Forbidden Planet. So yeah, there are bases on Mars. I agree with that. Absolutely. Um, it would only make sense. Landing spots, uh, et cetera. Let's see um let's see something about christmas lights behind you oh yeah are those christmas lights behind you or just i think it's just the way it's reflecting off of everything behind you or those christmas tree lights mike oh yeah they're just uh they're they're just i put them up at christmas time and actually i have a box there and i usually i just keep them up until they burn out and they usually burn out within like a month and they're still up so as long as they're still there they're still going to be up there there's some lights going over my book um Ancient Aliens and Secret Societies. And my little friend, my little 11 year old friend, Nishe Colombo, wrote uh, her novel, The Adventures of Red, about a little bird who develops telepathy and 
lo gets lost in a storm and finds her family. So I have that book there because she's really sweet. Yeah, I had somebody send me a book and I've got to uh, get busy reading. I still haven't figured out who to thank yet, but it arrived today. Love Saves the Day, Gwen Cooper, the same author of Homer's Odyssey. Uh, Lovely. Uh, looks like I got some reading to do. Mars been there, done that, got a lousy t-shirt. Yeah, I've been I getting some for my cheap trick t-shirt. It's like, if you want to be visible to get girls under 35, don't wear a cheap trick t-shirt. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, you, yeah, know, I you, have to get, you know, I tell them to wear like a uh, Backstreet Boys, but I think that means they're going to be like 40 now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, everything's like, aged out. I don't know what's cool. I mean, maybe I'm a not wear shirt. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to wear the Rihanna blood clot shirt. You know, Mark, it was really interesting because I went to see Cheap Trick Dave and I for our birthday. Our birthday was uh, 26th of January. And the week or two before, we went to see Cheap Trick where they were playing right here locally in Auburn. And we went and saw him. And you know what was really weird, Mark, is my grandparents now go to Cheap Trick concerts. And I couldn't figure that out. Mm. My grandma and grandpa were going to Cheap Trick. Uh, my son Riley is getting ready to go. Let's see. Um, Darius Rucker is appearing, uh, and he's got the original. The original. Let me make certain I got this one. Oh yeah, Hootie. Yeah, he's Hootie. The right? original Hootie is going to be there and Blowfish concert. He's going this weekend. I get to see the original Hootie now. He probably doesn't have a memory of it, but Darius used to play in a bar I had. Um, I knew Darius before Hootie became famous. Wow. Uh, and uh he got to he got to meet Darius when he was, I don't know, he was probably four or five. And then uh got to throw frisbee with Sister Hazel. You used to own a bar? Bunches of them over the years, but that's like a different life way back when. We'll have to talk about that sometime. Well, we'll have to we'll have to open a bar after uh, after all this goes down. We'll have to find a bar. Hey, look, if you've got a lot of money, the bar business is a great way to make it a little money. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you know how you make a small fortune in Hollywood, Mark. You bring a big, big fortune. That's how you big make a small fortune, fortune exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did like cheap trick. Yeah, what about the woman last night, Mike? Or women last night? Did, were, did you have some on your podcast or something? Uh, the woman. La I don't know what we're referring to there. Uh, no. Oh, oh, the you mean like the Valentine's Day stuff? I just told everybody, look, Valentine's Day is the best night to go to a bar and meet a girl because they're all out because they don't have a guy. So go out there and be their guy. You can meet a new. That's the best night to meet a new woman is Valentine's Day. Right. No, you're right. I mean, they're out there cruising. They're upset. Broke up with a boyfriend. Don't have one. I mean, Maybe. you don't have to get them a Valentine's gift. It's already Valentine's. That's right. But you, you know, you can you can. Who knows? You know, the world needs more babies. Let's get out there. Yes, look, this Mike is single. Yes, I am single. Yeah, but I would also like to uh, let you guys know that uh, Mike goes into uh, Facebook Marketplace to look for uh, for sale wedding dresses. Looks for them in smaller sizes so that they're not heavier women. Um, and then hits them up. Well, now that you're single. Filipina size. That's... <laughs> Filipinas. I'm a little worried about you, Mike. All right, we better uh, we better keep this one. Filipinas are wonderful ladies. They're very dignified and and they make wonderful wives. And they're they're very strict Catholics most of them. So red hot chili peppers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I saw somebody else uh, was uh, naming one. They've got I forget what it was like a deaf leopard shirt or something that's 27 years old and older than her daughter. Um, yeah, it was Def Leppard. Martha put that one. I have a Def Leppard concert from t shirt that's older than that's my daughter. I want to see Def Leppard. <laughs> it was probably 84, I think, when I saw Def Leppard. Well, I, I bought my first Cheap Trick t shirt in 1978 when they opened for Kiss. Okay. And I've had three Cheap Trick t shirts in my life. My last one was my favorite. And I, I, but I buried it with my little girl, Aurora, my little kitty. I, 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 oh, I, her I yeah, because I, because I wanted her to be wrapped in something that Daddy loved, and and so I put it in with her when they when they you know cremated her. And yeah, that was that was a, that was a tough one, man. You were flat torn up on that one. Yeah, I didn't know. What um, that. well, God's girl, how old do you think I am? Yeah, no, don't do that because then you're going to guess older and I'm going to be horribly upset. No, 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 no. I'm going to be crushed, 40, broken. If you're fifty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sammy Hagar sang a song about me. 
Yeah, I can't. You can't drive 55. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because because people think because I'm such a smart aleck that I'm I'm not serious about relationships, but I absolutely am. I, I'm I, I mean, look, you don't when you meet somebody in a bar on Valentine's Day, you don't know where that relationship is going. It can go anywhere. It can go all the way to marriage. Who knows? I'm just hey, telling look, Carl you. said, Mike, come on. Carl's still in the Philippines. He'll play tour guide. Yeah, that sounds great. And you know, there's this weird connection, Mark, with my family to the Philippines because my dad served there in World oh. War II. And it was obviously much more primitive back then. But he's got, there were some wild stories my dad told me about that. But he had a Filipino lady that he um, he loved very much, but couldn't, you know, a bit in the 1940s, couldn't bring her back, couldn't make that work in the USA. And I wouldn't be here if he had, but, you know, I mean, it's pretty interesting stuff. So I've got this weird sort of connection to the Philippines. I had a Filipino guy who looked like a little miniature Filipino version of my dad come up to me at Boeing one time in the 80s and say, are you Gene Barra's son? And I'm like, yeah. He says, well, my mom or my aunt knew him. And I'm like, oh, this is her. And uh, told me about how he was a well-respected man in their village to this day and that kind of thing. Wow. Was like, wow. Uh, that was here's, here's one of my favorite Canadians here. Every time I talk about single ladies, my helper pots the algorithms are listening to you. You suddenly start get Russian-Ukrainian wife ads, and all you did was mention single ladies. And it's yeah. just that, look, the AI is just trying to help you out. Now, well, let me I, up, did. I don't know if you open up Instagram and see what I've got in there. Right. <laughs> is oh, yeah. Is true. Travel to the Philippines. Meet a wife. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. It occurred to me, actually, I saw Kukla post because uh, she has to work in the morning and she is pretty much just about solo modding it this evening. Not completely. I've seen another mod once or twice, but it looks like she is carrying the weight right now. So, uh, we need to wrap this one up so that uh, she can right. get some rest. Our mods need rest, too. Well, thank you. It was loads of fun. And, yeah, I mean, anytime you want to talk about anything specific like that, like, let's talk about the moon landings. I'm happy to come on and just, uh, you know, you guys can take all the shots at me you want, but I'm pretty convinced that we went to the moon, and it's going to take a lot to budge me out of that position. So um, let's go. How old is Mike Barrett? I'll click on that one. Don't click on that one. Don't click on that, Mark. Don't click on that. All right. I got some self-control. All Woo! right. That was close. Oh, I almost cracked. Um, all right, everybody. Want Mike, thank you for coming uh, hey. on tonight. Now, I did see where they would also wait. Uh, hmm, Mark, is Mike the author of The Choice, The Dark Mission? Yes. Uh, that would, yes, that would definitely be our Mike Barr. You can also catch him on many episodes of Ancient Aliens. And other uh, shirts, yeah. Yeah, and, and he had a little more hair in some of them. <laughs> I've got some hair here left, but I just, it was all messed up because I was taking the nap because I've been sick with a cold today. So, But I am, I am taking my medication. It starts with an I, and I'm feeling better already, so. Oh, it's good to know that you're having a bowl of ice cream. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I watch him on Ancient Sea. And you get to see him here live. You don't even have to, like, search through all these. And I will be in Roswell, New Mexico, on March 10th, 11th, and 12th for the Roswell UFO Expo. Come on out and see us. It's going to be fun. It's going to be Tom Reed and Travis Walton, two of the most famous abductees oh time. really when, when yeah. is that that is march 10th 11th and 12th oh man i don't think there's enough time yeah no my uh, son and daughter are going to be here through the 12th so there's no way i can get there otherwise i was jumping a plane i was going to like cash in the uh air miles and uh come see you for that one because well i am coming to north carolina, carolina one of those i really would like to meet you don't want to carolina when uh and a uh, june 10th june 10th is the weekend Ooh. There is so, a Brooks and Dunn concert back yeah. in like Raleigh or somewhere about that time. So uh, we'll talk off air. All right, everybody. Well, who, uh, who is it you wanted to meet? Maybe I can get him to that other Walton. conference. Travis Walton. Oh, Travis. Yeah. Sky, Travis. That's uh, that would be you know that's that's Such almost a... like meeting one of the little aliens from um, Roswell. 
such a wonderful guy, such a wonderful man, so full of truth, so full of truth. What happened to him is weird. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're out of here. Thank you for joining, Mike. Thank you for joining, Mike. Hang around for a minute in the back studio. I'm sure. going to say goodbye to everybody and we'll be back at 10 in the morning Eastern for those that would like to join. Bye, guys. We're so close. We're so close. We're close.